to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. I let this go last time. I'd like to hit a delayed button on Coachella. Congratulations. On, wait, what you happened to Coachella? Yourself. Why, why did they have to come out with the no mask thing? Like, just to be fair, like how were they not going to sell out anyway? Of course they were. They were going to sell out no matter what if it happened. So, like, I'm trying to understand now well, that's what their sick. logic was, why more, you do that. I, I, honestly, I think it's political, and it has something to do with the area where Coachella is. That that area where Coachella is is very mogged out, man. And so they probably, they probably, I don't know, they probably were ingratiating themselves to the city officials in some way. Uh, you know, I don't know. That's what I was thinking because I was like, "Why for that crowd?" You could let you could let people know that when they pull up. Like if you've ever been to Coachella, you pull up to Coachella. First of all, it's outside and it's hot right. as hell, so you could let people know right when they pull up. But there and maybe there were people who weren't going to buy tickets, high end tickets. You know, it's an expensive ticket. Maybe there are some rich folks, you know, who are like, "I'm not going if I had to wear a mask." I guess you're. I guess you're right. And, uh, and, maybe direct- there, and, and and also maybe there was stagehands, you know, maybe stagehands and people was like, yo, I'm not working out in that desert. If you making us wear a mask the whole time, I'm not doing it. That's that's possible. That's possible. I, to, me, to me, it felt a little early and unnecessary, but um, I feel you. So, you know, we're guessing. Laura, what you got on the list today? Oh, this is a good story. So um, there's uh, a teenager by the name of Zion Brown, 18 years old. He's a sophomore at Loyola University of Chicago. Wow. He's been charged with armed robbery after allegedly stealing about $100 in cash at gunpoint from a train conductor. Now, this, mm. this went down in Chicago. Whoa. So there was camera footage that was released. And guess who identified him? His own mother. Mm. His Congratulations. Mom saw him. You played yourself. Dragged his ass to the police station and gave him one of these. Congratulations. You played Dang. yourself. Yep. She had her son turn himself in. She was not playing any games. I could just imagine the verbal lashing she gave him. Yo, I'm putting you through college. Ugh. We didn't work this hard to get somewhere. You're in college and you decide this is what you want to. I salute to that mom, man. Right? Like, really? This is what you're out here doing? Oh, man. What a story. Salute there's, to that know, mom, man. There's a few stories like this where moms have turned in their uh, their sons or daughters for breaking the law. But that's wild. Well, because at a certain point, right, when you get your kids to a certain point, you also got to let them know, like, yo, your antics not bringing the whole household down. Your antics not bringing the whole family down. I will draw a line. And let it be known that this this behavior won't be tolerated, whether you're my kid or not. You know what I'm saying? And maybe, and maybe, yeah. and, may, and we don't know what happened before this. There might have been uh, some repeated issues with this son, and mom had enough and decided yeah, not, to turn him in this time. Because what are you supposed to do? Because if you're a mom and you accept it, and you just like give him a little slap on the wrist, you're kind of implicitly saying it's okay. Well, and this is robbery, son. This ain't like... Hey, this is a real thing. Yo, at gunpoint. At gunpoint. Hell no. No, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Salute to Miles. Rosenberg, what's on your list? You played yourself. Well, I feel like, Ebro, this is just a good spot for us to talk about a big story from over the weekend, which was the uh, Juwan Howard, Dan Guard, I think that's his name, Michigan situation. Well, if you didn't see it, basically the head coach of Michigan... Jawan Howard smacked the coach on the other team. The reason, the reason is ridiculous, and Jawan Howard deserves the congratulations you played yourself. Wait, so why did he do it? You played yourself. Well, it, Lord, depends how you look at it, right? This is the hard thing about all beefs now. Well, and where when, do you, and where wait, do you want now, to start the beef? Well, now, before you start, we don't know. Nobody has actually. I, at least I haven't seen. Was something explicitly said between this particular coach that got smacked and Jawan Howard? Jawan never said anything. He didn't want to expound on it. 
But what every the information that everybody knows is what Rosenberg is about to explain, which is a basketball situation. So, and, well, and by the, by the way, it's also important to note the dude who got the open handed smack from Jawan was actually more of a mush. Not, more of a mush. More of a mush. Yeah, it wasn't the head coach. It was an assistant. Actually, it wasn't the dude he was originally jawing with. Right, and Jawan already else. had words with the head coach. Right. So basically, Laura, here's what happened at the end of the game. This is what people are saying at the end of the game. Um, Michigan, that's Jawan Howard's team, is down by 14 points, and they're pressing with like 30 seconds left, down 14. Laura, do you know what that means? Pressing. No, I'm just the same. Okay. It means it means that you keep you keep your your defense aggressive. They play defense the whole court. Okay. So okay, instead okay. of just being like, "Yo, it's over. There's 30 seconds left. We're down 14. We walk away." He decided to keep pressing. Okay. okay. So so the team who was up by 14, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, he th- that dude had all of his backup kids in the game, so he calls a timeout, which is what you do to reset the clock. So because you can't get it past half court under ten seconds, so you call a timeout to reset the clock. Jawan Howard got mad that he called a timeout when he was up fourteen seconds. But you're running but, a press, Jawan. So like it, it's and it's all basketball ish. That the here's what really happened in my opinion, where things got loose. The head coach of Wisconsin, when he walked by Jawan, Jawan did not want to talk to him at that moment. He wanted to walk past him. He did not want to have words with you right now. He was angry at you. And he pulled a, a, a move I very much relate to, and it does have white privilege in it, of he was like, no, no, no. And he like grabbed Jawan's elbow, and he was like trying to explain. He wanted to talk right then. And Jawan did not want to talk right then. And from that point, after he touched Jawan's elbow, oh. then people jump in and start pushing them apart. And then Ebro, I don't know what happened with why then Jawan then threw the random hand. Well, so if you random. look at the if you look at the video, that assistant coach came up from the back after the head coach had already been kind of separated from Jawan. Yes, which is why I'm like, what did that assistant coach do or say to make Jawan now smack him? And maybe he put. I was trying to look for it. Maybe he put a hand on one of Jawan's players. Maybe or something like that. Maybe. Here was my, my. Here was my feeling. In the moment, I was super tight. I was like, "You cannot do that if you're a head coach." And in because- the moment, and in the moment, I was like, "Yo, slap fire out him, Jawan. I love it." But you can't do that as a head coach. But, but that's I feel the thing. you. But that's the so that afterwards, when it was all said and done, listen, Jawan didn't get fired. He got a five game suspension. He'll miss the rest of the regular season. That's appropriate. And he'll be back. Yeah, Jawan. By the way, it's the second time having a near game fracas. You can't do it, bro. We love you. I mean, you, you can. Jawan. You can. The precedent's already been set. Isn't Bob Knight a legendary college coach? Bob Knight's reputation is not what it used to be, bro. Pe- people don't talk about him. In the same way they used to, because he was a maniac. He was a ma- no, a ma- he, but I'm just saying. You but he would never ma- exist. He would never exist today. Never. Ex- Yo, he took a dump in a pizza box and and left it for his players to find. He would never. He put his have hands on. Yo, he grabbed players by their jersey and threw them in the chairs. He but threw he chairs started, across the floor. But by the way, Ebro, John Chaney was one notch short of being as crazy as Bobby Knight, and he was lauded back then too. That's. But my point is, I'm just saying, it wouldn't exist today at that level, but it has existed. It has. But I don't. But, but the the problem with the Michigan fight was, Ebro. I thought it turned into a fist fight with your players. You oh, can't sure. be yeah, the yeah, reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't be bad. the reason. You're there as an adult. You can't be the reason your kids are fighting. Jamar. Oh, it's all bad. It's, it's all, all bad. bad. It's but all I loved this, it. actually. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the button.